So I grew up in the woods and have many stories about strange goings on. But this one happened a few weeks ago. I had just left my mother's house and was driving back to mine down a back road I've driven down many times before. I knew this road like the back of my hand and could drive down it with my eyes closed in reverse. As I was getting to the halfway point down this road, there was a thick fog, which is nothing new. There's just fog on this road all the time. However, I was driving slowly and starting to take turns I don't remember. There was a 90 degree right turn when it should have been left followed by a wide left turn that felt like a full circle. Then I drove straight for about five minutes with no hills or drops, and that road never has a flat section that long. There was then a left turn up a hill. As I was going up, all the hair stood up on my body, and I almost turned around there, but I decided to keep going because, well, I don't know why. This is when I pulled my gun from my glove box and had it on my lap. When I looked back to the road, Some dude was just crouched in the middle of the road. I slammed on my brakes and he didn't even flinch. I figured it was just some dude going frog hunting or some shit, as many people on that road do just that. I honked my horn and the guy stood up. He was massive, like at least seven and a half foot tall. Thin as a mother and his arms were just too long. It looked like he didn't have any clothes on either. I laid on the horn again and clicked off the safety on my pistol, just in case. He turned his head to what seemed like almost a full 180, and his eyes had that predator glow, like a wolf or a cat, and I raised my gun and leaned out the window, telling him to get lost. He took a few steps towards me. And I know this was stupid, but I tried to pull the trigger and my gun just didn't fire. Hammer clicked and no boom. I whipped the car around faster than I've ever done before. I then just flew down the road at least 20 miles an hour above the speed limit. About 30 seconds after I turned around, I realised that I recognised all the turns and hills. I was driving down the road like I had never taken that first right. I went back during the day and still don't know where I took a wrong turn. There are no side streets down that road that are paved and certainly no straight away as long as the one I drove. I went to the range a day or two later and put some round in the chamber and it fired no problem. I have no idea what happened. I also don't drive that way at night anymore. Please tell me, someone knows what I saw. None of my friends believe me, and even my mother doesn't. I know I'm not crazy. I know this happened. It happened a few days ago. For context, my grandpa is 93. He and my grandma had seven children, six boys and one girl. Throughout the years, he's lost two sons and his wife. It's tragic to outlive your children, but he's the strongest man I know. He's a veteran who still has his wits about him and will still work his tail off even in a wheelchair. Anyway, the latest loss was that of my uncle Larry, his son who died a couple years ago of liver failure at the age of around 58. Now, Gramps was never a believer in anything paranormal. My grandma loved to tell ghost stories, but my grandpa would insist it was all hogwash. Until the other day. Gramps was sitting in his recliner in the living room watching TV. He heard the front door open and a particular kind of hello, which only Uncle Larry said. With a distinct tone of voice that could only be him. Gramps looked around, hearing footsteps going down the hallway. He saw nobody there, which was strange, because he could hear the heavy footsteps in the exact direction he was looking. Once he turned his head forward again, Larry stood in front of him wearing his infamous trench coat and ratted cowboy hat. Gramps described a feeling of utter happiness to see him, without any doubts or questions you'd think would pop into his mind about his very recently deceased son appearing right in front of him. Gramps smiled big and looked into his eyes, saying a breathless hi, and then before his very eyes, Larry grinned and disappeared. I'm 35 now, and it's as if I've always been hypersensitive to the spiritual or vibrational energy side of life. Since high school, I was very heavy on drugs and alcohol, 
and hid it very well, to the point that I was a fully functioning, high, drugged up person from morning until I slept at night. I played sports every year and all throughout the year while still playing it off. It wasn't until I was around 32 or 33 that life got crazy. It was right before the pandemic. I remember crawling on my bedroom floor, gasping for air, to the point I was freaking out. All I remembered was having a hard time breathing and gasping until I blacked out. I woke up on my floor hours later feeling empty and like I was in a long hallway. That's when I began hearing and seeing things daily and all day. This was literally a few months before the pandemic broke out, before any word of the virus or its name. At that point in life, I had left a long, toxic relationship and started coming into a groove where I began going out again. It was 2019. That year, I got roofied four times. Four separate events throughout the year and coded twice in one night, a week before my 34th birthday. So that's two deaths, zero me. I was released out of the hospital and again, there was that empty feeling and it became bigger and overwhelming. So around age 33, 34, I'm working this sick job in a cannabis dispensary in Hawaii. And it was during the beginning phase of the industry in Hawaii. So it was very exciting times. I eventually worked my way into a store manager position for their third location. And that's when things began turning into a full blown haunting. I lived with my parents at the time. They helped me get my life together and watched my dog as I worked brutal soul killing hours. My mom reveals to me after the entire haunting that in that beginning, the security light outside of my room would stay on as if someone was standing right outside of my window. She also spotted a male figure standing outside, believing someone was there to the point she went out with a bat, but it was always nothing. All this happened and I was oblivious. I started to become aware when I would go to the bathroom at work. A simple small five by five foot bathroom with a sink six foot tall locker column and a toilet. I ate a lot, so I took a lot of shits. So when I'd be going number two, the faucet to the sink would go off and on rapidly. It was one of those sensor ones, so I thought nothing. It began happening more and more to the point that every time I went in there, it was going off. I began posting it to Instagram stories for fun and proof because no one believed me. One morning, I'm getting ready and it's doing it again. So I record and post. One of my co-workers, who was more like a sister, came in and told the whole crew to gather around one morning before opening, and she had some stuff to tell us. At this point, it's a couple months after opening, and just the water faucet was the biggest anomaly. She begins explaining how her wife saw a dark entity behind me, and to use her words, the entity played with me as if I was a toy. And she said she would see it at the window at night, watching us leave, as we did every night, at about 7.30 p.m. She gave a stern warning to stop engaging it because it wasn't good. We were all interested, but it didn't fully set in until a few weeks later. The wife literally drew the store's floor plan with specific details in each room, connecting to other ghost stories that our security guards had experienced, but were not made known until this moment. She said this dark entity dwells upwards and towards the back of the undeveloped space. A big, open, empty room with weird mirrors along some of the back walls totally looked like a construction site. It was fucking freaky. The wife would come and wait for a couple hours in the parking lot until we finished, because the building was very strict with government regulations on people entering without proper documentation or a valid medical cannabis card. She drew the map one day waiting in the car, having no idea of how the store was built but she explained it was like visions she was getting while out there. That kind of set the energy into an anxious filled vibration. Plus we were all worked to the bone and drained from it all. There was fear in the air and that heightened very quickly. We had a new girl from Tennessee. She began experiencing stuff immediately. In her first week, she asked if there was anything wrong with the bathroom faucet and we all looked at each other and said, no, but she knew. One night, we had a late patient come and we were helping her on the sales floor together while shutting down. Super casual chit chat vibe because she was the sweet auntie type. We had iPads which had a stand that displayed our menu. 
We had three on the sales floor always in its stand during opening hours. While we're talking to this lady helping her choose something to help her cannabis needs, one of the iPads flies off the stand and travels about three feet. Tennessee and I look at each other with a fearful what the fuck look. The room gets silent as we look at each other and the woman we were helping looks upwards and around, then asks if we got the building blessed. Sadly, they skipped that process for this store only because of the delays it took to open and they just wanted it done. So the answer was no. We told her no. She made her purchase and left right after that. There were three of us there and as soon as she left we locked up and came back to the sales floor to express our shock. Like what the fuck just happened and why did that lady leave like that? Then boom the building shakes as this huge boom on the roof that vibrates the whole room and being the manager with two freaked out girls I'm like grab your shit and let's go now. We ran like it was chasing us. Being the manager, I had to close the building down, so they waited right outside the door as I went and secured the building and set the alarm. We left shook and calmed each other, but I knew for sure that day stuck with them. Security would come and bring us supplies, since we were a few cities away from the main hub. So the guard and I were walking into my office when we swipe with my card and enter. The sensor doesn't register us, so the lights are off. So she tries to manually press the lights on, and nothing. At this point, the hauntings are becoming common knowledge for anyone who frequented there. So we're standing there a little scared, and I jokingly say, we've got to go out and ask the ghost for the light. She looks at me like I'm dumb, and we leave and close the door. I knock and ask out loud, yo ghost, can you turn the light on? I swipe my card, we enter, and let there be lights, working normally. She pieced the fuck out so fast, and I was just at all like, oh shit, this is for real, for real. To save some time, I'll summarise the hauntings, because the end is fucking nuts, I promise. Lights are going off and on, and now no one wants to use the bathroom. In the back undeveloped space during broad daylight, you hear conversations and people walking back there. The dark and empty room in a highly secure building, caught on security camera. We have a light switch physically turning off and on, as well as more iPads flying off its stands. I was having to send some co-workers who got locked in a room with lights turning off, and hearing growls because they were scared of getting sick. The speaker system would increase in volume until it was maxed out, but it made a beeping noise as it increases, but no one was near it. A noise made when you physically press the volume plus button. Pounding, knocking, scratching from the walls where the empty, undeveloped space was on the other side. The light bulb fell from the bathroom light when I was in there. Unscrews itself and fell in the sink while I was standing in the mirror. We had a locker in the bathroom that would shake and move to the point we found its screws and bolts on the floor every morning. Thinking the locker was going to fall and hurt someone, we move it to the undeveloped space. And then my friend's wife asked her that day if we moved something, and we said yes. She said, not a good idea. She had a dream, it fell and hit me, knocking me out in the bathroom. And that ramped up the haunting energy. Apparitions and electrical disturbances on security cameras. Many times I would have to go back to the store after we closed, and every time I left, I could feel someone watching me. And one morning, We would face and handprints on the window as if someone was pressed upon the glass, peering out. My bottle flew across the room when we walked away for a second with footprints in the spilled liquids. Footprints that didn't match any of us. Lights, fans, phones burning out around me at home. My mum and I started hearing loud booms in the backyard at 3am. So many others, but my mind is running wild. This was all in a five month period to give even more of an idea of how fast it all happened. Okay, last one before end. It made to our COO. One morning, I'm running late for work and in our company communications, we used Slack. Under my account, something messages asking, where's Aaron in an open channel? 
At the same time, I'm having a conversation with my assistant. I'm now leaving my home. That day, I was delayed when one of my window jealousies cracked and broke. I didn't see the question asking for me until I got into work. I get into work and our IT does their magic and sees that the message was sent from my phone at the same time when the window broke and while I was messaging my assistant. Now, on to the end. All during this time, our corporate office was too busy to even entertain a blessing. But after all of that and it physically affecting us, I was able to look for someone to bless it. At that time, we had a kahu or spiritually intuitive teacher healer person used in our family because she helped detach an entity from my niece, keeping her from sleeping and eating to the point she was going to the doctors and they didn't know why. So one day, before opening, I called her and she knew. She said, he's right behind you. I'm on the other side of the lobby wall in the undeveloped area when my friend comes through the door saying she heard a growl and she feels sick to her stomach. She was right on the other side of the wall from where I was. I have to send her home because she's pale-faced and shaking. This kahu begins telling me that this entity is not good. He was obsessed with watching me and playing with me, hence all the disturbances. She begins to explain more that he attached his energy to me during our construction build walkthroughs, the same time when my mom started seeing that guy outside in the backyard and the security light right outside my room constantly getting triggered and staying on at night. The big one was when she explained that he was a child molester and did a lot of horrible things when he was alive, and that he died in the area behind our building by water. Either he drowned, or someone drowned him. That's why the water faucet kept going off and on. So I'm floored, but quickly after that events aligned, and we finally got blessed, and it was the perfect energy cleanse which calmed things down completely. My first memory of anything really paranormal was me walking in the pitch black at seven years old. I was scared of the dark. I would never consciously do this. Going down the stairs at my mom's house, looking to the left, and seeing a white spirit in front of the refrigerator, with the fridge being open. That's all I remember, nothing afterwards, and I, to this day, cannot remember if it was a dream or real. Second experience? I'm 13 at a continuation school with gang members and druggies. They make a fake Ouija board out of paper, and I play along. That night, I woke up from a nightmare about a demonic goat in a pentagram. It's 3am and my TV is on the stereotypical static like in horror movies. The remote was on my bed right in front of my face, aimed at me perfectly. I always turn the TV off and put my remote on the floor next to my bed routinely because I'll stay up all night if I don't decide to go to sleep. I brushed it off and went to bed a little scared. But that morning, the paper we played with was ripped up and scattered on the lawn. This could have just been the kids playing a trick though. Third story. Because of the second story, I had my room set up like I had OCD, so I would know if anything moved. I had my door propped up with my laundry basket. I didn't even have hinges on the door at the time. Everything was in its correct place and lights off with the door closed. I remember waking up to something trying to get my attention. Not verbally, but like telepathically, like when someone is watching you and you can feel it. I opened my eyes. I'm pretty sure this was still me in my dream, but I saw an all black face staring at me, like someone peeking in my room. I only saw the face, no body. Not like it was floating, but like it was bent over creeping in. I then became fully awake and just like in the dream, my door was open but I didn't see the face like I did in my very first memory or dream. I look around and the hallway light is on like my vision, but no face. My light and ceiling fan are on and my fucking office chair that's always perfectly parked in front of my desk was rolled all the way to my bed to where it was touching my bed. I'm frozen in fear, waiting for something to pop out or for me to hear something or for me to hopefully still be dreaming, but it was real and I was losing my mind in fear. 
This all happened at 6am this time. Two minutes go by and I hear my mom go to the bathroom and I muster enough courage to get up and go to her. I ask her if she was at my door trying to get my attention and she said she just woke up. My heart drops like a fucking anchor. I have no history of sleepwalking, just an FYI. I tell her what happened and she is shook too. She had her own experiences. I told her not to tell me because I was too afraid to want to hear about it. I'll get to that soon. I end up going back to my room and when I walk past my three-year-old little brother's room, at least three of his toys start going off. I can't make this up. Then nothing happened. I just went to school real confused and scared, just trying to explain what the fuck I encountered. Nothing really happened since the third story when I was 16, but it doesn't end there. Like I said, I told my mom and sister to never tell me what happens. Fast forward to a few months ago, when I was 25, I finally asked my mom what she had seen. So let's get into their encounters. First thing my mom tells me is there are four ghosts in the house. And of course, the first one she says is a white ghost that is not evil in the kitchen. I've never told my mom about the dream of me seeing a white ghost in the kitchen. Then, she says there's a baby in my little brother's room. The toys are going off by themselves. Another toddler in the hallway, which my mom and sister claim to have seen. They said he has a striped shirt. Then, she says there's a big, very evil entity in my room. She then says she's seen the big evil one spying on her out of the corner of her eye. And that my sister saw it too downstairs on the couch. And the big evil one was on the staircase peeking around the corner. My sister said she felt a hand touch her back when she was laying on the couch downstairs when she was younger. She also said one time she went to the bathroom at 3am and saw a big shadow guy in my chair staring her down or like focused on her in the dark. This is where it gets really crazy. My little bro told my mom about a nightmare he had with someone sitting in my chair. Like I said, I have no reason to lie. This shit is crazy. Luckily, nothing has really happened besides hearing something thrown at the wall when I was home alone once, before the chair incident. My neighbour was a woman who drank a lot, did a lot of drugs and had a lot of money. For purposes of anonymity, let's call her Jane. I wasn't too close with her, but sometimes she'd want company and I'd get high with her or she wanted company to the store and would buy me whatever. One day, she comes to my door after recently being discharged from the psych hospital. Jane was already high and drunk and basically tells me we're going out and we're going to party, etc. And I agreed. Long story short, after going to a bar and drinking, she wanted some cocaine and kept talking about it. I, at the time, was an addict, mostly abstaining from street drug use, but was taking methadone and was familiar with the drug spots. And since she was just going to spend hundreds and give me a bunch of money for myself, I told her that while I can't get coke, I can get crack. She was okay with that, so we went to the west side of Chicago. On the way, her BMW security system activated, because earlier she left keys in the car and climbed through the sunroof to unlock the car and retrieve the keys. Out of nowhere, the wheel locked and we had this whole ordeal. The panic of that incident transformed Jane into a fun-loving drunk to a violent belligerent one. She went from being sweet to being like the exorcist. And this transformation occurred as we were in the hood a mile from the open-air drug market. Somehow, I managed to make the deal go down without her creating a scene or drawing attention from the police, etc. I picked up like $100 of crack and $100 of heroin. We got in the car and she started speeding and talking about suicide. I was so freaked because I couldn't persuade her out of the insanity. So I pulled out the drug so I can at least calm my nerves with opiates before the inevitable crash and or arrest. Jane demanded to use when she saw me pull out the bag. I tried to explain to her that we had no crack pipe and we couldn't use yet. None of that got through to her and she ripped the bag out of my hand. Unknowingly, she grabbed a bag of heroin ripped the stop with her teeth and snorted it. Shortly afterward, we finally crashed when she failed to stop at a light and rear-ended a young black man in the heart of the ghetto. 
The crash snapped her out of her insanity, and she rushed over and gave the man $50 and some weed. His car wasn't damaged, and he understood by our dialogue we had drugs on us and needed to dip. So he accepted what she gave him, and he even helped calm her down and bring her to the car. After that, I was allowed to drive, and I could see the drugs were taking effect, and she was falling into a blissful but conscious state. When we arrived back home, I walked her home and left with all the drugs, knowing she had too much. At this point, she was still conscious, and as far as I knew, she had none of the hard drugs we had just picked up, but did have alcohol and the Xanax she's prescribed. After that night, I hadn't seen her for about a week and was nervous something happened to her. I googled her name and found out she died that night. It hit me so hard, and after that, I started regularly using it again. One day, I was smoking outside weeks after all this happened, and two police detectives arrived at my place. They knew we were together because they got access to the ATM camera where I withdrew money from her card. I told them pretty much everything but left out the part where she grabbed the heroin from me and snorted whatever she was able to stuff up her nose while she was frantically speeding down the road, raging on about suicide. The detectives left and told me they'd get back in touch after they get a toxicology report and do further investigation. A few days after that, I was smoking a black and mild cigar and filming myself blowing O's. At the time, I recorded myself I was completely alone on my patio and it was totally silent. I didn't immediately rewatch the video, but when I did, I noticed the sound of a woman's voice whispering closely to the monk, saying, hurry up and say it. It took no time at all for me to realize whose voice that was and what she wanted. She wasn't a heroin user and only used accidentally while drunk and raging. When detectives returned a few weeks later, I made a point of telling them. They recorded a video of me telling that all that happened for her family. The overdose and heroin use was an open question and confusing to them, so it all fit with my intuition and the words captured on video. I live in an apartment complex and she lived above me. Since then, things fall over all the time. Lights turn on all by themselves. The weirdest incident was I walked in the bathroom and shower curtain was rapidly shaking. And I ran out thinking a rat was in the bathtub, but nothing there. Sounds of footsteps are ever present late at night. I warn friends about it when they stay the night. And every time, every friend that stays will say they did hear strange noises and footsteps. The hat man haunted me. From five to eight years old, I grew up in a chaotic household with a drunk father. The first set of dreams didn't have the hat man in them, but were certainly related. I don't remember too many of these dreams, but it consisted of a little girl with pitch black eyes who tried to gain my trust and led me to this house. I believe she was leading me to him. The house was creepy and caused me to yell no in my sleep. The Hatman dreams came directly after the first set. I remember this like it was yesterday. The setting was an old ranch on a dirt road. I never went to the ranch, I only stayed on the dirt road. The ranch, however, was always dark, built of old rustic wood. The ranch was to the right of me, and everything else around me was nothing but dirt. The first time I saw him, he stood far away with a top hat a trench coat, and a shadow for a face. I stood on the dirt road motionless and scared for my life. He then immediately got really close and tried to get me to go into his portal on the ground. The portal was a circle and was maybe as big as the width of a car. I refused, and that's when he started to hurt me. He scratched me, and I would wake up scratched in real life. He choked me, and I could feel the sensation of being choked. He would come back night after night after night to try and get me into his portal. Inside his portal was pure darkness, nothing to see, just black. The setting never changed throughout the dreams, always just a ranch on a dirt road. After nights of terror and waking up in pain with scratches and being choked, I decided that tonight I wouldn't be scared of him and hopefully he'd go away. That night was the worst of all nights. 
He threw everything at me, scratched, choked, and inflicted pain in my body. He then dragged me into his portal, and I was only hanging on with two hands, with my feet dangling in his portal. At that moment, I knew I couldn't be scared of him. So I just hung there, not screaming or fighting back, and I realised I wasn't scared anymore, and he disappeared. When I woke up immediately after the dream, I decided I wasn't going to be scared of him. I looked in my doorway. As a kid, I always shut the door before I slept, but this time it was cracked. I looked and I saw him, but he looked different this time. He had a brownish face and you couldn't really make out a nose or a mouth. His eyes were silver or white and he just stared at me for about a minute. He then just left and I haven't seen him since. I was really little, like still sleeping in my crib in my parents' room, but I was old enough to be able to get out of my crib by myself. I was laying there on my back. I saw the door open and my dad was there, but he's blue, like dead. Not just his skin, but his clothes sort of blue too, maybe even glowing a little. He makes a funny face at me and starts making silly noises and walking toward me like he was going to tickle me. I was paralysed I was so scared because this thing looked like my dad and sounded like him, but I knew it wasn't him. He was contorting his face so much and just sounded crazy. Then it just disappeared. I got up and climbed out of my crib and ran looking for my parents. That's all I remember. But I was so terrified I couldn't even scream or call out and I was too little to be able to verbalise what happened. I suppose it could have been a nightmare but it was so terrifying and I couldn't even yell or cry about it. I was a nervous kid from then on. I was always afraid that something paranormal was coming to get me. This isn't the only time I saw a family member that wasn't there. There was another instance when I was in elementary school. My older sister and I shared a bedroom. I was on the top bunk of our bunk beds trying to sleep while she was out with friends. I had terrible allergies as a kid and that night, I was struggling to sleep, just laying there in the dark, sniffling and feeling miserable. Then, I see my sister walk in. I sat up to greet her, but she just fell into her bottom bunk as if she was really tired. The whole bed shook when she hit her mattress. I looked over the edge and saw her foot hanging off the edge of her bed. I thought it was weird she didn't see me sitting up and looking at her. After an hour or two went by, I started having a sneeze attack and needed to blow my nose a lot, and I was worried I was going to wake her up. So I got up, climbed down my ladder, and started walking towards the door. I felt like I should check on her to see if she slept through all my sneezing, but when I looked, her bed was empty. I turned on the lights and tried to stay awake the rest of the night, but eventually I slept. The next day, I was told my sister had spent the night at a friend's house. Do ghosts try to look like people you know? Why would a ghost do this? What do you think it was trying to do? I know this could have been sleep paralysis, as I've had many instances of that throughout my life, but these two times felt different since the entity looked like my family, and not a monster or witch or anything. Especially the one with my sister, because I was up and moving around, not paralysed in my bed, and I hadn't fallen asleep that night yet. When I told my dad about the incident with my sister, all I got was an, uh-huh, So I moved to a new house a year ago, and one of my siblings is renting out the basement. They kept mentioning hearing sharp tapping on windows and other unexplained noises before I moved in. We were doing extensive renovations and literally repainted the whole house from baseboards to ceilings. I never thought much of it until I was in the basement completely alone in the house. Well, I heard the sharp tapping on the window myself and ran outside to catch who did it. No window blinds, and I was standing next to the basement door outside. Well, no one was there, and it was the middle of the day. So neighbours are all gone, and kids are at school. Not many in this neighbourhood currently anyway. Fast forward a few months, and I was doing dishes in the kitchen, and a cup moved in a curved line towards me in the counter. 
I tried to recreate it and couldn't do it. One day, my siblings and fiancé were home, all in the same room with me, and the light in the dining room began dimming and flickering. Then, on the 4th of July weekend, my cousins were visiting, and one of their kids, who was alone since the others were outside, yelled from one of the bedrooms that the light kept turning off and on. Then, on the same weekend, I was in the kitchen, and a covered plate of raw burger patties fell off the stove top without anyone touching it. And yesterday morning, I woke up and noted that my feet were cold, and I needed to pull the blanket back on them. When I felt the blanket put back over my foot, like the laundry detergent commercials where they shake the sheets out, then felt a light pressure in what felt like the shape of a hand. I didn't feel like it was malicious in any way, but still, there's been too many incidents with too many witnesses to ignore this any longer. Some background info. I'm high functioning autistic, which means I have a harder than usual time communicating with people that can still lead a somewhat normal life. So when I was a kid, it wasn't uncommon to have strangers over in the house. My parents had a lot of friends and my dad worked from the garage, which was a separate building in front of the house. My mother would often have friends over, so I was used to having adults I didn't know come and visit. Then, this one time, I went to the living room and noticed that my mom had a friend with her. He was a tall guy with curly hair and dark clothes. He was just standing in the corner behind some furniture and looking at me and making faces. I instantly got spooked and asked my mom who her friend was. She looked around confused and asked me who I was talking about, to which I replied by pointing towards the corner without looking and saying, there. She told me there was no one there and for me to stop lying. Now apparently, autistic people have issues with injustice. And this is what I remember the most from the episode. I got supremely pissed at my mom for accusing me of lying when the guy was right there. I insisted that there was someone there and looked again. The guy was still standing in the same spot, making scary faces and looking at me and my mom. She looked in his direction again and told me there was no one there, telling me to go there and touch the guy I was allegedly seeing. Now, if there was one thing that I absolutely didn't do, it was to go anywhere near that guy. Then I saw my mom staring in his direction and him looking back at her and convinced myself that she was just messing with me and stomped out of the living room. I remember being so angry at her for trying to fool me and having this dude scare me. Later that night, when my dad stepped after work, I asked him who was their friend that had come over and he just went like, what? Who are you talking about? Nobody came over today. I described the guy and he just said he didn't know anyone that looked like that, then called my mom over and inquired about it. She once again scolded me and told me to stop lying and again I got so angry that I just went back to my bedroom and started crying. Eventually she came over and kind of apologised but insisted that there was no one else in the house with us. So I kind of just tried to convince myself that I had somehow imagined it and moved on. My wife and I were watching some guy telling ghost stories on YouTube recently, and that's what brought over this memory for me. A couple of days later was my mom's birthday, so I went to visit her and asked her about it. She doesn't recall this episode, nor does my dad, but she remembers that at this time she would hear loud cracks around the house, like if someone was hitting the walls with a hammer. She would also see a figure, like from the corner of her eye. I was also often very sick. She remembers taking me to some religious house about two years later, where a lady told her that I had a dark presence over me and gave her some stuff to do, like lighting candles and so on. And after she did it, I got healthier and she stopped seeing and hearing stuff in the house. Again, I don't believe this stuff, but I have a hard time dealing with this memory. So I've been thinking about this encounter for a while, and there's this one hill that creeps me the fuck out, especially at night. The hill's in a town called Ravina, located in New York. 
I went to the abandoned house situated on that hill. Now, when I entered the house, it was maybe like 45 degrees outside, which isn't warm, but it was super humid. But the moment I entered it, it felt like I was freezing. It felt like someone left the air conditioner running for hours on end. Now, I'm something that's called a sensitive. It's like a medium, except I can't see the spirits, but I can feel their presence. Now, when I say this house felt hostile, I mean it felt hostile. I felt watched from one room in particular. If I was standing in the kitchen, if you go straight, there's two rooms at the end of the hall. I felt watched from that area, but I couldn't pinpoint where in particular. Now this house looked like a tornado tore through it. The floor was rotten and partially missing. There were paint chips everywhere, among other things, and generally just not the best looking. I remember that house being built and seeing someone move into it. But when I went in, there were belongings everywhere. Think of Chernobyl. It's as if they up and left suddenly and randomly. I even found an envelope with a name on it. Can't remember the name. But I eventually found the kid's room and found a kid's toy, which immediately gave me a shiger and goosebumps the moment I touched it and realized what it was. Once the house felt extremely angry or whatever, I left. And as I was leaving and walking back down the hill, all I see on my left side is a blur that comes to a sudden and abrupt stop, which immediately caught my attention. And the blur was white, but I couldn't make out any details. I just knew it was pissed and was glaring at me. The town's about 250 years old. As for where the creek was, it was near the wooded section, which was located pretty close to the house. But I noticed a figure and crossed the road to the other side and refused to go back until I came out onto the main street. In a separate session, I heard footsteps come from the attic. I heard a metallic clang, which I was unable to debunk as a pipe issue, or me kicking something, and there was a plastic chair in there that felt colder than cold. Outside it was probably around 30 degrees, but inside it felt like it was a solid 20. I also found a pair of antique cutlery in the entrance of the basement a spoon and fork. So this happened sometime in February. I want to say the middle of February as it was still fairly cold out. I recently just got out of a psych ward a few days prior to this story taking place. But this is House on the Hill and it's an absolutely gorgeous house. Around 3,000 square feet I'd say basement and an attic, so around four total floors. One day I was bored and decided to go on a walk over to this hill. Now at the time, I didn't even know where this house was situated. I just knew the hill and wanted to go on a walk. So I'm walking and not much happens in between my house and the hill besides seeing some shifty guy, which doesn't contribute to the story. So I get to the hill and I see just how fucking steep it is and I groan, but go up. Now this hill isn't that bad to walk up. At the time, I assumed it'd be horrible. So I'm walking up this hill and it's forested on the right side and the left side had a bunch of houses. So I'm walking up the hill on the right side. It's night by this point, like pitch black. And as I'm walking, I'm just looking around, not seeing a whole lot. Eventually I reach the house and actually almost walk past it as I couldn't see it at first and proceeded to say, I remember when this was being built and when people lived in it. And now I'm huge on urban exploration and exploring super abandoned places. So I saunter on in, just driven by curiosity, as I'm curious by nature. And it looks like a bomb went off. Floors are rotten, just piles and piles of debris and a bunch of other shit. The owners left a bunch of their mail. I would eventually find a Peppa Pig plushie and this Thomas the Tank Engine sound wheel, but it looked like they just panic, left their shit and left. The attic had a bunch of trash and suitcases as well. But fast forward maybe like a week, I return to this house and quite a few things happen. As I'm walking around, I eventually reach the living room and there's this green plastic lawn chair like the ones you see in the movies. And it was noticeably colder than everything else. Keep in mind, it's maybe 50 degrees out 
and this house felt like someone was blasting the air conditioning at max for hours, whereas outside it felt like stepping into a swamp. But I didn't think much of that. As I stand back up, I heard this metallic clang like a pipe or something, so I tried to recreate it and kicked this piece of metal near me and it made a totally different sound. So it wasn't me accidentally kicking something, but ultimately couldn't debunk it, so I moved on. And I eventually heard footsteps from the attic, like someone wearing heavy mud boots. Now mind you, there's nothing in the attic that can make any sort of sound. Same as the basement. And upon hearing this, I was beyond interested, and even went up to check it out. Obviously found nothing. So couldn't debunk that either. So eventually, I left. Like an hour later, after only hearing one other thing happen, it sounded like tapping against a metal pipe. Either that, or dripping water. Which was weird, as the house very obviously did not have any utilities. But I leave, and as I'm walking down the hill, I see this large white mass move very and alarmingly quick off to my left. Now it's super pitch black but I snap my head to it before anything can happen. And all I get was the feeling of being watched, which had happened in the house, when I was in the kitchen. I felt watched from over by the son's bedroom, but not a child's gaze, adults. But me and this white mass more or less make eye contact for a few seconds. Then I just decide to cross the street and leave. I did some digging on that property and every owner only lived there two to four years before leaving. The two most recent seemed to have vanished off of the site's database. There was no contact information, no new address, nothing. Recently, when I went in there alone, there was a painting of something. It was hard to make out what it was, and a curious George book on the counter. Then, me and a friend went up to the house to hang out in their car, just so we could be in a kind of tucked away place. And they said to me that they saw this shadow figure coming straight at them when they went to take a piss. Oh, and the garage light was on, when it previously wasn't, so we assumed it was a motion light, but it refused to turn off. This happened to me a few months ago. For backstory, the house I live in now, I've been living in for 10 years, and we've never once had paranormal activity, so this was quite terrifying. I'm a fairly heavy sleeper, so I don't always wake up to things in the middle of the night. This time was different though. I awoke at about 3am one night to feel my bed shaking slightly. I thought I was imagining things, but then the shaking got more violent. I could feel at the end of the bed the sheets being pulled off the side, as if something was trying to climb up onto the bed. This and the shaking got more intense and I couldn't move or do anything as I was paralysed with fear. As all this was still happening, I felt the mattress next to my chest being pushed down, as if someone or something was sitting on the bed next to me. Then I heard a low, demonic growl in my ear. At this point I screamed, and it all stopped. I was awake until the sun came up. I had been half expecting my parents to come running in as their room was right next to mine, and the walls are super thin, but they didn't. I told them what happened in the morning, and they said they didn't hear me scream or anything growling at all. They don't really believe that this all happened. I still think about this often. Maybe I was dreaming and that's why my parents didn't hear anything. Maybe it was sleep paralysis or something. Nothing has happened since though, and I really hope it never happens again. In 2016, I went to study abroad for a year in Munich, Germany. I went to plenty of places this time. Local towns to explore and further regions of the country for hiking. I got to know a girl in my programme and we started spending more time together as we were both from the Detroit area and went to the same university. I liked her and she liked me and I was a bit more spontaneous with exploring with the idea of being as random as possible. This particular day was on December 26th, and we were at Marienplatz, a central location and subway station in Munich, deciding on where we wanted to go and what we wanted to do that day. I played a game with a friend back in the States called the Highway Game, where we would just drive, 
take random highways and take exits randomly to get as lost as possible. And we just have a good time talking during our time, trying to get back home without any use of GPS. Anyways, why this is important is because that is what me and my friend were doing at Marienplatz. Just getting lost, which is how we ended up taking an S4 S-Bahn train towards Ebersberg. We still haven't decided which exit we plan to take as we're just sitting on the train and just waiting for the right moment to hop off. We decide to get off at the Baldham stop and begin to walk out to the station towards the village. We're in the beginning stages of talking. Have had some close moments while talking and this just felt like another timeless talking session with her. We walked around the town and eventually found some woods to walk through that were quite dense covered with moss on the ground and tall pines everywhere. We made the mistake of going out in the early afternoon and after an hour of train ride, arrived around 3 p.m. And being the middle of December, the sun was dropping quite quickly, making for a forest with a shadowy backdrop where I couldn't see much beyond 100 feet or so. We found a patch of thick moss void of any trees, which made for a nice spot to lie down and just stare at the clouds moving by. As we sat there taking it all in, I felt like it was a good moment to lean up and go in for a kiss. As I got up on my elbow looking at her, I noticed something moving in the background within the shadows, just darting between the trees. It wasn't more than a few seconds later that I realised whatever was darting between the trees was now darting towards us. I didn't think much of it, since I thought it may have just been a dog, but as it got nearer, I realised this thing was canine and huge. Before it reached us, I stood up and it stopped within feet of us, just snarling and growling extremely loudly. I dragged my friend up and told her to just start walking away. I followed her, but noticed that the canine creature walked in a circular path around us, to the three o'clock position from where it stopped. I began to walk with her, and as I turned around to check where it was, I saw that it was gone. We never heard it leave or saw anything run away. The only thing we did here was a howl about 30 seconds after we left from laying on the moss, at which point we darted to get out of the woods. As we did, we came across a gentleman walking his small dog, greeted him and felt a sense of security. Nonetheless, we left as quickly as possible and went back to the station to catch the next train back home. Now I know one may be thinking that could have been a wolf. But later that evening, I looked to see if there were any wolves in the area, but found that the majority, if not all wolves, were killed following the expansion of human society on the continent, with the closest known population of wolves being near Poland, Ukraine and Russia region. It could have been a large dog, but let me tell you, I have dogs and have grown up around dogs and have been attacked by a dog before. I know what I saw was not your average canine. It looked wolf-like, but was huge. If anyone has an idea of what happened or is from the Munich area and knows of anything like this happening, please tell me, as my friend and I still talk about how freaked we are about this. All I can say is that just as quickly as I noticed the canine and as it tried to attack us, it was gone, making for a supernatural experience in my book. The first time that it happened was last summer. I was in a Japanese restaurant with some friends when I suddenly dissociated. A few moments later, I couldn't see anything. Even if I felt like my eyes were open, I started having a very strong but foggy memory of me being in a ferry boat, surrounded with fancy dressed people. I stared at the coast out of the windows, then looked at the plate filled with what looked like mashed potatoes and gravy. The memory stopped abruptly and I wasn't dissociating anymore, but I felt terribly tired. The second time was in June. I was at a friend's house playing video games and chilling when I started dissociating again. Everything went pitch black and then I started remembering again. I was in one of those very old steam trains and it strongly smelled like leather. I wasn't alone. There were other guys, all in what I recognised as an Italian World War I uniform. They all had sad and nostalgic expressions on their faces. I looked out of the window and then it all went away. 
but just like the other time, I felt very tired. The third and last time for now, if anything new happens, I'm going to keep you guys updated, was about a month ago. I was home alone on my couch watching a TV program when one of those strange memories kicked in again. Everything went black for a while and then it started. I was in a trench that smelled awfully like dirt, mold, sweat and decay, along with a lot of other men. And again, everyone was in uniform. We were all looking at an officer giving out a speech in Italian, but even if it was in my own language, I couldn't understand a word. It all sounded very familiar, but it just felt like that wasn't my language. He spoke for what felt like a minute, making this the longest memory I had so far. And then it all stopped mid-sentence. Everything went back to normal, but I was so tired that I fell asleep a few minutes later. In December 2018, I was visiting some friends in Halifax, Nova Scotia and staying with them. I was traveling with my Portuguese girlfriend. One of the roommates, Hannah, came into the front room where we would sleep and started a conversation with us. She started talking about fortune tellers, psychics, mediums, etc. People who see people's futures and past. At the end of the conversation, I told Hannah that it's interesting how she told us all of this one day before I was going to one for the first time. Another friend had planned for me to visit one the next day in another part of Nova Scotia. I didn't tell anyone about it, not even my girlfriend. Hannah told me a few things in that conversation, namely how she wouldn't want to know anything about her current relationship because it would be really shitty if you were with someone and were then told it wouldn't last. That would be depressing. She also mentioned dragonflies being a sign of hers or maybe the sign of her friend who told her some stories. The day came and my good friend Laura took me to see a spirit guide. Nobody paid for anything. This was just some kind of destiny. Her name was Julie. Never met her before and she wouldn't know anything about me or my girlfriend. But she did. We were invited into her home. It was cosy and I came in with an open mind. I don't believe in anything really, but there's no way all of this is a string of endless coincidences. She started reading to me. She gazed into my soul and I looked away while I was sitting on a bar stool in her own kitchen. I felt that looking into her eyes for however long would be pretty awkward, especially for posture. She started talking so fast, she wouldn't even pause for a moment. I didn't say a single word for the entire duration. I just listened. You are followed and protected by four spirits, two of which you don't know are dead. When I was four years old, my grandfather died. I also lost a friend, who was the son of Laura, who took me to see the spirit guide. Aside from that, I haven't lost any other friends or family. But my lifestyle has been one where people come and go. And I met many people and made lots of friends for life, but I had to part ways. It made sense. Not to get over analytical, but four has always been my favourite number, and my magic number. You are going to have a change of transportation. This one was random, and confused me the most at the time, because out of all my travelling in life, I never had once change of plans. Fuck me, the next day it happened. We were supposed to hire a car and drive to Montreal, but the car hire company didn't accept her licence because her country has a very specific restriction of driving in Canada. Never heard of such a thing. We had to abandon that and had to catch a bus the next day instead. That's not all. We need about five or six buses. 25 hours to Montreal. First bus broke down on the highway within an hour. In the snow. Two changes of transportation. Right after the day we were told. Syria. Something happened in Syria. Every time I've thought about it since, it gets creepier and creepier. My girlfriend's brother was in the Portuguese Air Force and went to Syria to fight ISIS. ISIS captured him and cut his head off. There was a documentary about this, but I never found it. My girlfriend didn't tell me this until we left. Julie didn't know my girlfriend, not even her name or anything about her in advance. Even so, this isn't something you could search for. You lost an important necklace. When Julie was reading my girlfriend, she said this. 
No more than seven days earlier, she lost the necklace her aunt gave her. Her aunt died. She told me this two to four days before we met Julie. So we were both shocked to hear this because my girlfriend just told me about it that week. There were also so many obscure things from my past that I hadn't even thought about for 10 to 15 years. You just couldn't make it up and I couldn't even tell you, but it was real. He wanted to tell you, comrade. My friend that died in 2015 knew me for a few years. We would address each other as comrade because we were game developers that ran a very famous military genre gaming community. But I completely forgot about this one little thing. It was a reminder. Don't worry about money, it'll come. I wasn't sure what she meant at the time because my finances were always the same and stable. But a few months later, things became complicated, but I handled it. Then I had a golden opportunity to earn six figures on a project for May 2020. The person offering this deal was very nice, but something inside me to hold to wait. Two weeks later, borders, airports and stores all over the world shut down because of coronavirus. Right now this is still happening, but if this is also true, then perhaps whatever mess this virus could put me in, I'll be okay in the end, even with two new more mouths to feed. You have a question about your relationship. She said this to both of us. There was literally not a word more on the subject of relationships. As Hannah said to you the day before, that would suck to know your future. I immediately knew that what Julie meant. She was my girlfriend and I was her boyfriend, but we never defined it. We met casually and just kept seeing each other. We never said I love you, we just existed side by side. We got along well, but we never actually talked about our relationship. A few months later we broke up and haven't seen each other since. We didn't even have a relationship status on Facebook. Ever since that day, for many months, I kept seeing dragonflies. Or because Hannah told me that she or her friend kept seeing dragonflies. I saw a real alive dragonfly for the first time in years shortly after this experience. I saw decorations of it in stores everywhere. There were so many more things. I wish I could remember it. I've also seen things before they happened. In January 2020, I had a dream of being in a plane crash. I was living in Lima, Peru at the time. A few hours later, a plane crashed in Iran and had lots of news coverage. I also sensed that I was having a baby girl when my, my wife, the new girlfriend after the one I visited Julie with, was pregnant. I had such confidence, yet my family of the whites is cursed with boys. I have a brother, we have a father. He has a brother and sister, but the sister has a son and two twin sons. The older son of my aunt now has two twin sons. He not only has twin brothers, but also twin sons. My brother also has a son. Despite all this, I just knew I was going to have a girl. I made a goodie bag, put in lots of pink stuff and sent it from Peru to my parents to simultaneously give them gifts and to announce the pregnancy. Not only this, but before I told anyone what my daughter's name would be, my parents gave a gift. A blanket with the moon on it. Her name is Luna.